Welcome back, Sethling here. Thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a spoiler for a huge project I've been working on. And so, I'm showing you a bunch of redstone stuff, but you probably can't tell what the actual project is. I've been working on this project for the last month or so, and I actually didn't do most of the work on this. I mean, I did a, I did a fair amount of the redstone, but a lot of the work was done by other people too. And it's a huge project, I'm really excited about it, but you guys will see that later. Uh, what I wanted to show was some of the map making tools that I used to create this project. And in specific, I want to talk about this spawn area, which could be used for a lot of servers. I want to talk about colored armor, and I want to talk about colored and custom uh, command block say messages. So the first thing is the spawn area. This is useful for anyone who doesn't want a huge spawn surface on their server, just wants a pinpoint. The idea is... The actual spawn point for the server is set right here, but the way that Minecraft servers work, players can spawn in anywhere on the sandstone area, which is a large, large area and it might not be desirable. So what happens here is, when players log in, they trigger this tripwire, there's a bunch of tripwires here, they trigger the tripwire and get their spawn point set elsewhere and then just get teleported to that location too. So what we've got is those tripwires feed into a bunch of signals that come in right here, and... Basically, all of those signals from the tripwire feed right into this torch. If any of the tripwires get triggered, this torch is going to turn off. What that does is it turns this redstone clock on. This is like the most basic redstone clock you can get. And so that will cause uh, this these command blocks to get set, or to, to get activated. So it'll set the spawn point for the player, uh, it'll set their game mode, and then it'll also just teleport that player to the spawn point same spawn point as over there. And the reason I have a clock here, instead of just directly hooking the tripwires up straight to the tripwire, or straight to the command blocks, is that, well imagine, whoops, imagine that five people log in all at the exact same time. And this actually happened to me. That's why I changed it to a clock. Imagine five people all log in, and they all trigger the tripwire. Well, the signal would come down here, and it would trigger the command blocks and one of those players would get their spawn point set uh, and teleported. Then the other four players would still be triggering their tripwire, and a new signal wouldn't get sent down to these command blocks. And they would just be standing around. And they basically would never get their spawn point set, they would never get teleported. The way this clock works is as long as there's a player up on the surface, this clock is going to keep blinking, and it's going to keep teleporting players away until there's no one left up there, at which point the tripwires will turn off, which will turn off the clock. So it's a very useful spawn point mechanism for any server, not just not just for you know the type of project I'm doing here. It could be for any server if you want a more pinpointed spawn location, which I think a lot of people do find that useful in in their maps. All right. So the second thing I wanted to show was how to make uh, colored armor that is very vivid. So I'm going to give myself some leather armor, which is ID 299. I'm actually going to give myself a stack of that. And I'm also going to set the damage value. And I'm going to set the damage value to negative 30,000. This is really useful if you want armor that isn't going to run out. Uh, you could try adding the unbreaking enchantment to armor, but it doesn't actually do anything. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up these dispensers. And in the, in the project that I was showing earlier, we were dispensing the armor from those dispensers, so that's, that's very useful. And so I'll fill up the dispensers, and I'm going to go over to MC Edit. Okay, now that I'm in MC Edit, I will select all three dispensers. I'll use my Fill Dispensers filter, and that'll fill them all the way up to 127 per slot. If I double-click, we can see we have a bunch of dispensers with uh, 127... Sorry, um... 127 count and negative 30,000 damage, and yeah, those those armor will take uh, well 30,000 hits actually, actually a little bit more. Okay, so then the next the next step if you want the color is to go down to the color armor filter. Uh, here we can make some red armor. Actually, let me use 255. So these are all on the scale from zero to 255. Uh, very common scale to put colors on. And I'll make some red, some green, and some blue. 
and I'm just uh, I'm just setting the values. And of course, you can mix and match red, green, and blue uh, as colors mix. And then we'll save this and head back to Minecraft. And now back in Minecraft, we can look in the dispensers. We'll see stacks. They look like they have 64 in the stack, but if you pick up the stack, it actually has 127, and you can't actually put them back together. So if you Oh, interesting. You kind of can. I get. Mm. <laughs> it's a little tricky. Uh, there we go. You lose one each time. Yeah, you can't put it back. So, so yeah. If, you know, I would have to run fill dispensers again to get this all the way back up to 127. But it's a nice way of getting the dispensers filled up. It's not infinite, but it will last quite a long time. There's over a thousand uh, of these items in each dispenser. So. A uh, nice way to get colored armor, and you can see it's much more vivid than you'd be able to craft normally by just using dyes. And that's pretty useful when you're trying to make armor that will stand out as a certain color in a custom map. Okay, so the third thing I wanted to show was the command blocks. So I'm going to give myself a command block and plop it down. I'm actually going to make a couple and give myself some, let's see, buttons some other material here. All right. So I whoops. So I want each of these to say something and I'm going to show you the filter. So say hi slash say there. So I'm using slash in this one. I didn't use slash in the last one and then uh, say bud. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into MC edits and in MC edit, whoa. I will load up another filter. Well, I'm going to select the command block and I'll load up another filter. This one is the color command block text filter. And so I can pick a bunch of colors. These are the same colors that can go on signs or as the name of the world files or whatever. Uh, sure, p pink. And I can choose bold, strike, underlined, or italics. So I'll use strike. I just want to demonstrate the capabilities of the filter so that you can see it for yourself. Uh, let's see, I'll make a dark blue uh, italics, and I will use uh, aqua bold. And I'll save this, and I will head back to Minecraft. And back in Minecraft, if we go ahead and look at the command block, we can see it has those styles, the strike say hi, italicize there. It kind of behaves fun funny with the, uh, the commands, but you'll notice the the filter worked even though there was a slash, so it doesn't matter whether you have a slash or not. Uh, so then it'll have a strike through it, italicized and bold with pink, blue, and cyan text. So this is pretty useful for making your command block text stand out because if there's a bunch of people dying or chatting or whatever in a game, uh, then this will help. It'll, it'll help the command block stuff still be visible. So that's all I wanted to show you, some just some useful tools. You can download any of the filters that I showed in this video from the video description and check it out for yourself. And thanks for watching.